Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God has been good to us. He's blessed us to be able to come to this place and to serve him in spirit and in truth. I want to welcome those uh, visitors that we have with us. As we said earlier, either you're in, present, uh, in person with us or you're enjoying our live stream. Um, special welcome uh, to my namesake, my son, Freddie Campbell III. Uh, yes, you did not know I was Freddie Campbell Jr. And I wasn't going to tell you. Uh, because when I go home, even at 60 plus years old, I'm still a little Freddie. So I, that's why I didn't want to tell you. But welcome. Get to know him. He's a fine young man, if I do say so. If I do say so by, uh, myself. Do we have any visitors who are visiting for the first time? in the audience. Any first time visitors? We don't want to, uh, we don't want to be rude and not uh, acknowledge those who are with us um, as our first time visitors. Also, just to say a word of encouragement to those residential members. Thank you for the work that you continue to do to support the work here in Trent. Again, uh, just an announcement, July the 14th, I will be participating in the summer series at uh, the Odom Lane Church, that is a Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night, I believe. And I think they will probably have that live stream. If not, you can uh, you can catch that later. But um, I'll be over at the Odom Lane Church talking about the fruit of the spirit, specifically uh, the fruit of the spirit about joy. We've already mentioned singing night will take place uh, Wednesday, uh, June the 30th here at the building. It's a time. It's a great time for us to learn new songs as well as perhaps brush up on the ones um, that, we, that we already know. I want to invite everyone to uh, come out to the building and uh, participate with us this Wednesday in our singing night. Um, as already has been mentioned, um, the services visitation uh, for Caitlin, um, this one, it, 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 death is always a sad time, but to be celebrating the life of one so young. Um, it is very, very difficult, very challenging. Let's say a special prayer um, for the family. Uh, but at the same time, let's also remember this is our calling. This is why we are the church here in Trent, to help uh, lighten the load and the burden um, when, when one of our own is, uh, is hurting. Um, visitation, as we said, will be on Monday. Um, at the Starbuck Funeral Home in Merkel, and then the celebration of life um, that Monday evening at six o'clock. The, the uh, visitation will be from four to five at the funeral home in Merkel, and then celebration of life will be at the community center here in Trent. Um, and I put this note: um, the community is invited, but also um, they 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 would welcome any food donations because this is a community event. Um, we will be gathering to celebrate. Um, Caitlin's life, but because of the number of people that I'm sure are going to be there, please do what you can to bring food um, to, just to help serve. This is why we're the church in Trent. This is why occasions like this that we can we can rise up and we can serve the community that we live in and that we love so dearly. Let me finish up the uh, series that we've been doing this month, Weedem and Reap. Um, I've had, you don't know how many times I've had to practice <laughs> in order to say that, so I don't get a slip. You don't get a slip of the tongue. But that's been the, the series this month. Um, as we're doing our spiritual gardening, we're pulling some weeds out of the uh, the spiritual garden of our minds so that we can be um, better and we can grow more fertile soil and everything can be be better for us spiritually. Daily maintenance for the spiritual gardens of our mind. And you remember I said at the beginning, weeds in a physical sense are very invasive. They have an invasive root system and they quickly take over all of the surrounding earth. Earlier in the month, we had a visitor and he pulled me aside. He said, Freddie, you know you live in Trent, right? And you're talking to a farming community about weeds. Man, you are brave. I said, you know what? The, the word of God is still the word of God. And it's the same horticulturally as it is in our spiritual lives. We don't need to let things get into our mind and, and grow out of control that takes our mind and our focus off of who God is. And just in case you didn't catch it as we've been going through the month, we talked about the worries of the world, 
We talked about the enemy and his tactics of coming in and, and planting weeds among our wheat. We talked about last week how to enrich the soil of our minds. And today, let's talk about disarming any daily distractions. If you haven't caught it, now I've kind of outlined it, outlined it for you. Several people caught it earlier in the month, and they, they called me and sent me a text. You think you're clever, don't you? I said, yeah, I really do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really do. Today, let's talk about, OK. Somebody said, preach about family, leave people alone. OK, I'm going to leave people alone. Let's talk about disarming daily distractions in our life. Stay focused. There's so many things in our life that pull us and, and try to distract us from keeping our mind and our attitude focused on God every single day. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 through 11. I'll start this now, and then tonight I'll finish this up online and possibly even on Wednesday night. Um, uh, no, Wednesday night we'll be singing that, so I'll have to finish it. I'll have to finish it tonight. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 through 11. Not only does Peter lay out, I think, the root cause of some things that distract us. The reason I love the Bible is not only does he show us the problem, but in, that, in this scripture also, he's going to give us the solution. Listen to the reading. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm. <clears throat> Standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a while will himself restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast and I love the way Peter ends this little section of scripture to him be the power forever and ever and then he says amen let me give you three things two of which I'll talk about briefly here the other one I'll talk about tonight, if we're really going to stand guard against distractions in our spiritual life, the first thing we're going to have to do is humble ourselves. Now, that sounds strange because offensively, we would think we need to go do something to stand against the wiles of the devil, but that is offensive. You ever known anybody in your life who is just the exact opposite of humble? If you haven't in your mind formed that word yet, think of the word Arrogant. Somebody said, well, brother, I'm a, uh, yeah, that described, don't you start. Don't, 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 don't start. Don't start. But if we are really going to be the people of God, and if we're really going to deal with how we weed our spiritual garden, the first thing we're going to have to do is to be humble. Look at the second part. Verse 7. Cast all your anxieties on him. I don't know what it is about us that we think that we are so much in control that we have to work things out absent of who God is in our lives. I have a theory, and that theory that I, I hope I'm wrong, I don't think I am, but I hope I'm wrong, my theory is we don't really think about God until two times. Number one, when we tried to work it out ourselves and it's failed, or number two, it's Saturday night and we gotta go to church on Sunday. I hope I'm wrong. One of the things we got to really wrap our brain around is it's not so much about us and who we are. All of our life and all of our praise and all of our glory needs to be about God. Tonight, I'm going to talk about how to resist him. There's some spiritual resistance training that we need to do to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Let me talk about the first two. And then I'll, I'll, I'll take my seat. You know, if you're humble, if we're really talking about humility, old folk used to pronounce it, the H was silent when the old folk used to say it. Humble. <laughs> humble, but it's humble. If you're talking about humility, you're really talking about someone or something 
that is free from pride or free from arrogance. You ever know anybody in your life like that? Almost to the point of being abused or, or, or they would think um, that, that they're being used but they're really being humble. I've known several people like that um, in my life, almost to the point of just surrendering everything over because they don't take any defense in their life at all. Psalm 25 and 8. I love this. I love this text. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his way. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Have you ever noticed a person who exhibits humility in their life? Their life itself is almost a guide. You ever known that? There are some people that try to tell you what to do and they shout at you and you do this. I've had certain supervisors, I can say this now and it sounds good to say, when I was working, I, I've had supervisors who try to enforce things and, and I respected the office that they held. But I've had some supervisors that just got right alongside me and we worked side by side and we got the job done. Guess what? I respected those supervisors a whole lot more than the other ones that just barked at me. Oh, I did my job, don't misunderstand me, but the one who got beside me and worked with me and showed me how to do it and work with me, those were the ones in my book that taught me true humility. If we're going to really be humble before God, then we're going to have to allow him to use our life to guide other people to him. See, again, my theory is we do too much preaching at people, but we don't live what we preach. And we wonder why our numbers, if you keep up with this sort of thing, but the, the membership of Churches of Christ has become declining. The gospel hadn't changed. The doctrine hadn't changed. I think it's on us. We haven't lived what we have been preaching. When God guides you, God's guidance is a lot better than man's wisdom. See, I like to show off and think and show people how smart I am and how much I know. And that's not right. That's not being humble. I really need to be a guide and allow my life to show people the way of God. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 34. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but shows favor, look at this, to the humble and the oppressed. The wise inherit honor, but fools only get shame. And then the second part, and I'll finish this other tonight. When you talk about anxiety, it's one thing to be humble, but you haven't known some people also in this text it really talks about being anxious. You ever known people that, that work themselves into a, a nervous wreck really over nothing? They worry and they're anxious about things that they cannot change. And I understand it because as a human being, we like to want to think that we're in control and that we're going to hold on to everything. But you know what? If we're really going to be Christians about this thing, we have to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God submit to him and that means giving him all the glory and the honor and I don't need to be anxious. Anxiety is apprehension or uneasiness or nervousness and it's usually over something that we cannot control. Anxiety and worry, I just put this note here, anxiety and worry to me are cousins. I started to say first cousins but, but anxiety and worry are cousins because there's nothing about being anxious there's nothing about being worried about that you're expending all this energy and I'm expending all this energy and it ain't going to change a thing. I need to submit to God and allow him to work through whatever the circumstance in my life. Isaiah 41 10. So do not fear for I'm the Lord and I'm with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. Listen to the promise. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. See, when I get anxious and nervous and I fret about things, I think I've forgotten that God is in control. All I need to do is back up. Isaiah 35 and 4. And then I'll wind this down. 
Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come save you. What's the, what's the takeaway to this? You know, no matter what I face in life, and, and I may face health issues, I may face financial issues, whatever I face in life, me worrying and fretting is not going to change a thing. Only thing it does is expend energy that I'll never get back. So what's the takeaway? What do I want you to remember uh, about this lesson this morning? I think it's quite simple. We need to stay focused on actions and not distractions. We need to make a plan and turn that plan over to God, pray about that thing, and then allow God to take care of everything else in our life. Number one, we need to be deliberate. I don't think we are. I think this is something that we have to learn. It's a learned behavior, but we need to be more deliberate. And I'll give you the second one. We need to be more intentional about our spiritual growth. And I think that's the problem. I don't think we're deliberate and intentional when it comes to our spiritual growth. And stick with me tonight, and especially next month, we're going to talk about prayer, and that will show us how to be more deliberate and how to be more intentional about our spiritual growth. Join me online tonight, and let's talk about some spiritual resistance training. There's some weight training that we need to do spiritually. The same that we do in the weight room should do in the <laughs> weight room. But the same training applies to us in the spiritual realm as well. Next month, we'll begin a new series, and let's talk about prayer. Prayer being our declaration of dependence. We need God, and it's in God that we trust. I'll be going to Psalm 18, verses 1 through 3 for the foundation of that particular text. So next month, let's talk about prayer, and I've got a prayer exercise for you that we'll talk about, we'll talk about next week. Um, as we kick off the month and talk about the importance of prayer. But you know, God has blessed us all to come to this place corporately. And if you have a prayer need or something that's in your life that you, you know is causing you to stand a guilty distance away from God, this is the time. This is what you came for. It's not so much to show off your new outfit or to see your friends. and Those are all good things, but we came in God's presence to make sure that when we leave, we are in a right and a true relationship with him. If you need prayer in just a moment, we'll ask that you come forward and let us know what that prayer need is. Or if you haven't begun your faith walk with God, you haven't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. You come by hearing his word, believing it, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ, and being willing to be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. Based on that act of obedience, God then adds you to his congregational family. No, at that point, it's not all roses and unicorns. It's not all smooth sailing. But what that does is set you on the initial path and your connection with God. If you have a, a need or a prayer request, we, we encourage you to come now and make that be known as we stand and as we sing the song of invitation. <clears throat> 